Hello, Serendipity students and Ladybug class. All this week, Miss Patrice and I have been talking about Earth Week because Wednesday was Earth Day. And one of the things that we've been talking to our students about a lot is why we need to make sure that endangered animals are protected. Because if we lose them, if they go extinct, that's really not a good thing. Now you might think to yourself, well, yeah, I like tigers, but what if there were no more tigers? I'd, I'd be okay. But you might not because every animal on earth and every insect, every bird, they have a specific place in something called the food chain. And they have an effect on all the creatures around them. You might think something is really small. It's not going to be such a big deal. Oh, we lose one or two animals. That's okay. But this book here is going to tell you why it's important to protect all the different species that we have here on planet Earth. So I hope that you enjoy it and I hope you find it informative. It is called, What If There Were No Sea Otters? Oh, that would be so sad. Sea otters are so cute and playful. And it's a book about the ocean ecosystem and it's by Suzanne Slade and it's illustrated by Carol Schwartz. Sea otters know how to have fun. Found in the Northern Pacific Ocean, these furry mammals love to tumble and twirl in the water. Sea otters live in kelp forests near the shore, along with colorful fish, crabs, clams, and sea urchins. All living things in the ocean ecosystem depend on each other for food. Plants and animals are connected to one another in a food chain. There are lots of different food chains in the ocean ecosystem. The sea otter belongs to more than one. When many food chains connect, they make a food web. And you can see here is the sea otter. Okay, and the sea otter eats the sea star. The abalone eats the sea star. Um, the abalone eats algae. There are small fish and crabs that are eaten by a larger fish. There's a sea urchin. The, the otter eats the sea urchin. The otter eats the larger fish. Um, the otter eats the octopus. There are all sorts of things that happen in this food web. Sea otters are big eaters. One adult otter can munch as much as 25 pounds of food a day. Sea otters enjoy all sorts of tasty treats, including fish, snails, and mussels. But a sea otter's favorite meal is sea urchins. It's critical. Sea urchins are round, spiny animals. They generally live near the shore where the water is shallow, tiny tube feet help them hold on to rocks. And here's a picture of a sea otter floating on its back, munching on a delicious sea urchin. I like to eat sea urchin too. Sharks and killer whales hunt sea otters, but people are the biggest danger. Sea otters get tangled in fishing nets. They're hit by speeding boats. Litter and oil spills turn the animals' watery homes into garbage dumps. As a result, sea otters have already disappeared from some areas, and those areas have changed for the worse. A ship called the Exxon Valdez spilled 11 tons of oil off the coast of Alaska in 1989. The spill killed thousands of sea otters. And so this is a sad picture. You can see the sea otters are caught in the net and they can't get out. What would happen if sea otters became extinct? Without hungry otters to dine on them, sea urchin populations would start to grow out of control. Sometimes a plant or animal species is so important that without it, many other species could become extinct. 
It's called a keystone species. Sea otters are a keystone species. Keystone species help make sure an ecosystem has many types of life in it. So you can see, here's all the life in the ocean. Some sea urchins, you can see the spiny sea urchins here, but we're taking the sea otter out of the picture. No more sea otters. Tasty kelp leaves and algae make the perfect meal for sea urchins, but the sea urchins would eat faster than plants could grow. Soon, sea urchins would gobble up nearly all plant life near the shore. Kelp is a sea plant that uses sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water to make its own food. All plants do this. The food-making process is called photosynthesis. So you can see lots more sea urchins because there are no otters to eat them and less plants. Sea urchins aren't the only animals that eat plants. Fish, crabs, and snails do too. But before long, they would be in danger. They wouldn't be able to find enough food. And plants aren't just food. Kelp forests make great hideouts. Small animals hide in the kelp to escape big animals that may eat them. Some fish lay eggs in the kelp and raise their young there. Others use groups of plants as markers to find their way. Without plants, many fish and other small sea animals wouldn't survive. You can see they don't have any place to hide. And this big black thing right here is we're taking away the plant there. You can see now that fish can't hide from the bigger fish. And look, so many sea urchins there on the floor of the ocean. Octopuses and sharks don't eat plants, but they eat fish and crabs, and fish and crabs rely on plants for survival. If plants disappear, so do large sea animals. Sea stars also eat sea urchins, but they don't eat nearly as many as sea otters do. Sea stars cannot keep the urchin population under control by themselves. So you're seeing a lot more of these fish and sea animals blacked out, they're going to be affected by the loss of the sea otters. And look at how many sea urchins we see on the bottom of the ocean floor now. That sure is a lot. What was once a place filled with many kinds of life now looks very different. No sea otters gliding through leapy kelp forests. No clusters of clams on the ocean floor. No crabs clicking their claws. No graceful, colorful fish. Just lots of sea stars and hungry sea urchins. Ocean ecosystems where sea otters have disappeared are called urchin barrens. Barrens are overcrowded with sea urchins and sea stars and have little plant life. So what would happen if sea otters became extinct? A lot. One small change, such as the loss of sea otters, can make a big difference in the lives of countless plants and animals. That's why it's so important to take care of our ocean ecosystem. Thanks to caring people around the world, more than 90,000 sea otters now splash in the northern Pacific, and more sea otters means stronger food chains in our oceans. Hunting sea otters is against the law in most places. Special laws also help reduce pollution in our oceans. Wildlife teams are reintroducing sea otters to areas where they once lived. These otter families are doing well and having new pups. And you can see the red areas here in the ocean are where there used to be sea otters, but they have disappeared. And then these green areas that you see here are where they've come back. Okay. And here is a little note from the author at the end of the book. It tells you the ocean animals that are in danger um, these animals are in danger of becoming extinct if nothing's done to protect them. The hawksbill turtle, the sawback angel shark, 
the flapper skate, the Chinese Baja Ba fish, Harrison's deep sea dogfish, and the southern bluefin tootle, turtle. <laughs> Tuna. <laughs> Tuna. This is a hawksbill turtle. I was trying to say two words at the same time. Right there. And how to keep our oceans healthy. Take shorter showers and turn off the faucet while you brush your teeth. Saving water helps keep our lakes and oceans cleaner. It also leaves more water for fish and other wild animals and plants. Don't litter. Trash can kill all sorts of ocean animals. It can get caught around whales' tails or sea lions' necks. Tiny pieces of plastic may get stuck inside the stomachs of seabirds and turtles. Don't pour harmful soaps or chemicals into storm drains. Storm drains lead to canals or rivers, and whatever enters a river will one day reach the ocean. Ride your bike or walk instead of taking a car. Cars burn gas, a fuel made from oil. By saving gas, less oil needs to be shipped across oceans, reducing the chance of spills. Join a wildlife group near you. Groups may have local cleanup days or other events where you can help protect the environment. You can also join a national group such as the World Wildlife Fund or raise money to adopt an at-risk animal. I hope you enjoyed learning about sea otters and about the ecosystem in the ocean and why different animals are so important. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.